Good morning, everybody. It is Monday morning, about all right at six o'clock in the morning. Just got up, got dressed, finished packing everything up from last night, getting ready to head downstairs, get me some breakfast, and then I'm gonna wait for the taxi to come get me and take me to the uh, terminal. And hopefully, this is gonna be a good day, and we're gonna get this orientation knocked out and. I'll be in a truck by the end of the day. Uh, I'm ready for this to be over with. I don't mean that sound like it's torturous or anything. It's just been without work for a month and I'm ready to get an income coming back in cause what I've been doing, you know, while it's helped, ain't been, you know, paying every bill. So I've got a lot to catch up on. Um, and it's gonna take a minute to catch up on them, everything. So, but yeah, just um, getting ready to head downstairs, eat some breakfast, slept as good as I could. Been dealing with a toothache, um, so I gotta have that thing about when I get back home. Figure out the money to have that done, but uh. Yeah, I mean, just y'all wish me luck and uh, talk to y'all later. Hey everybody, so orientation was a bit of a long day. Uh, finally got in the truck, still not quite finished up. Have to do a few more things first thing in the morning, but they did go ahead and put me in the truck as you can see um, in the truck. I don't have a trailer, I bobtail to the truck stop. So I could, you know, like get something to eat and I'm gonna spend the night at the truck stops or the yard cause there's no way to get anything at the yard. They lock the yard at night, small company in a bad neighborhood, what can I say? Um, that's what they advised me to do. But the everything was real nice. Everything was down to earth. Um, you know, I get good feelings about the company. So hopefully that's a good sign. Um, Let's see if I can kind of give you a tour of what will be my home on the road for the week and the weeks to come. So, this is your bunk. Um, that's my duffel bag in the corner. There's no top bunk, so it's just a one person cab, I mean sleeper. Um, this is the first new Volvo I've been in, so you have the slide down when the shades and the slide up when it's for the top. Used to, usually, they are snap-on or they're Velcro. Got a TV mount and the mounting brackets for a TV if I want to put a TV in here. I might, I ain't decided yet. Um, little cubby holes um closet that one down there is messed up the hinge is messed up this is not a new truck this is a used truck um so there's always going to be some issues with um trucks as you can see you got you a little like this is like a desk slash eating table slash storage drawer um as you can see, you got cup holders, you got power supplies, that's a blank one. Um, if you have an inverter in this truck, it's already wired for um, the use standard house sockets, but you have to have an inverter. This truck does not have an inverter built in. So, um, as you can see, I've already got my phone and my GPS mounted to the windshield. Um, got plenty of storage up here if anyone ever you wonder. This is a Volvo uh, 760. It's a 2020 model. So it's about, mm, what would you say, about three years old. Um, so as you can see, it's got your fancy gauges. It is automatic. That's your button neutral reverse drive manual even though 
I don't know how you're supposed to shift it in manual because there's no manual controls that I've found. Um, um, that's the magic box for um, your logs. No passenger seat. This is where my CB will go when I get it and get it put in. Got you another little power outlet here. You got little built-in USBs here. Um, it just really is a pretty standard, um, you know, truck. You got your your gear transmission temperature, and you got your oil temperature. Um, got all your standard gauges over here. Um, cup holders I got to clean that one that one's a little crusty and I don't know why it's a little crusty but it's a little crusty but I got my cup holders um, all in all this is kind of um, what I've got I've got a little pocket which is where my tablet is stuck I got more charge ports um, lamp for the foot wells this is the AC control for the back um all in all it's not much to really see but this is kind of the life of a trucker it's a basically an economy apartment on wheels and it's my home away from home eventually i'll get some other stuff moved in i'll get my little freezer slash cooler put in um to have cold drinks and stuff don't know where i'm gonna put it yet but i'm gonna put it somewhere um and just gonna try to make the best of it out here you know and as things go on and all i will keep y'all updated as to what um what goes on but i do have a good feeling about the company i really like the company um like i said they seem very um very laid back very uh, matter of fact, I think they had the board I seen on the inside said they had about 110, 116, 115 drivers. The ma the uh, manager, I don't know why I say manager. I did meet the managers, but I uh, met the COO today and I met the um, owner today because he came around, and shook hands, introduced himself. That's pretty. That's pretty nice. I can't say that I've ever met the owner of any company I've worked for. So that's that's pretty good pretty up there um i ain't got no complaints about the truck i mean i it's better than some of the trucks uh, well better than a lot of the trucks i've been in um because they um they really take care of your um your needs in this truck i mean don't the lease operators they get a bit more um uh, nicer trucks they get the um what what's called the volvo 860 they have a yeah. slightly bigger sleeper it's about um seven or eight inches deeper and then the bottom bunk converts into a table and you have a top bunk so if you technically wanted to sleep up top and leave the bottom converted into a table like a like a dining table then you have that set up and that's a lot nicer in my opinion um if things come available if time comes available i will look into their their lease um and i might do that moving forward i don't know um i do know i like the truck i think i've said that a million times now be like truck truck good yes so um yeah it's awesome i think i'm gonna like the company but it's yet to be it's yet to be determined i uh, won't know till time goes forward um but uh yeah hey let's see but for right now i'm about to settle in it's been a long day i didn't get much sleep last night i'm gonna try to get a little sleep rest a little bit and maybe um see if i can't get my tablet out and watch some tv or something and just kind of relax it's been that kind of a day and I'll catch y'all later. Hey everybody, so 
this is one of my favorite parts of trucking not really uh is the waiting now i'm at my first delivery with the company and um i knew where i was going so i knew there was going to be a wait i'm in what they call a staging area for those of you who aren't familiar with trucking basically you show up and you either get get a hold of them on the radio if you got one which my radio is not in here right now or you call a phone number tell them you're here and give them everything so they can verify that you're supposed to be here today and then they'll be like okay we'll give you a call when we have a door ready for you so that's what i'm doing now i'm waiting for a door they'll call me i'll go back to the door back in do what i have to do there depending on what the procedure is here and then my second favorite thing sarcasm it's not is i have to deal with a lumper and a lumper is basically that it makes you the middleman in a way for paying somebody to unload their freight in other words a company orders freight from the manufacturer receiver whoever but instead of having employees at the warehouse to unload everything they do a third-party service i.e. a lumper service and that lumper service instead of charging the company that ordered the freight they want to charge the company and or trucking company that brought the freight or shipped the freight so basically the lumpers will be like okay it's going to be I'll give an example it's going to be 350 dollars to unload the truck well the warehouse that ordered the stuff isn't going to pay that so what happens is the trucking company pays it but they don't pay it directly in other words the driver has to call into the company get a efs number which is what we use efs checks you get a, a po number to put on the EF, efs check an approval number for that amount and then you write the check out you give it to them and they process the check now here's the trick you better keep the receipt for that check because you've got to turn that back into the company because the company needs that receipt so they can bill the shipper and if you lose that receipt then it comes out of your check the driver's check so basically it makes the driver in a weird way in charge of paying the lumpers or being the middleman to pay the lumpers I, I think lumper services are ridiculous. You know, I don't think they, they, they should be there. I think if a company orders freight, if they're gonna have a third party there to unload it, they should pay the third party. I don't think myself as a driver should be on the hook or responsible for paying them. Because, like I said, if something happens, they don't get the receipt in, the receipt get mis gets misplaced, then you're responsible for that lumper fee. They will take it out of your check, and every trucking company does this. Because I had a trucking company do that, and they're like, well, we didn't get the receipt. And I said, I sent it to you, but hold on, I'll send it to you again because I kept a copy so they had to they then had to reimburse me the lumper fee um but yeah that this is part of it it's probably my least favorite thing about trucking but it is uh par for the course it happens i'd rather not deal with lumpers at all but more than likely there's going to be a lumper fee And I'm sorry, I'm checking to make sure I don't miss the call from them telling me that my uh, my dock door is ready. And so right now I'm sitting here waiting. You know, the old adage is hurry up and wait. More than likely, I'll get unloaded here. I'll go find a truck stop. I'll shut down for the night. 
and I'll pick a load up in the morning and go um, go deliver that and probably try to be home by Friday. That's the goal. Because that's one thing this company does advertise is that you are home on Fridays, most Fridays, and you don't leave back out until Monday morning. So in other words, you get your whole weekend, which is nice. Most companies, when they say weekends home, they mean 34 hours. Just enough time to do a reset, and then you're expected, if you get home on a Friday, you're expected to leave out around noon on Sunday. So, I like that. I don't mind getting home sometimes on like a Saturday or leaving out early on a Sunday sometimes. I'd rather that not be the norm, though. So that's one of the things that interested me about this company. I, so far, I do love the way they do things. Um, it's just, you know, the normal stuff, you know. So this is what I'm doing. I'm waiting. And hopefully I'll get unloaded in the next hour or two and get them paid for their little lumper fee, and then I will go park probably get a little fuel get a shower and take a break till tomorrow morning because they're working on getting me something out of Florida back up that way and then go from there and I hope y'all can hear me I just realized I had the fan like running I just realized I had the fan running wide open just then, so maybe y'all could hear me. But yeah, so that's what you do. And so I'm gonna jump off this uh, recording and go go in the back and wait, and hopefully they will uh, call me soon to get unloaded. Hey everybody, um, so it is Thursday, almost noon, so we'll just say it's basically noon on Thursday, and um, so I sat yesterday at the receiver for, it really what ended up being five hours, once again, anytime you have a place that uses lumpers, they're going to take forever to unload, <clears throat> that's just the way they do. I don't know why, but that's the way they do. But anyway, so I sat there um, five hours, got unloaded, thankfully, um, got the lumper paid, got out of there, um, came up here to um, this Flying J here, just above north of Tampa. And got back then, found one parking spot, backed into it. And that's where I've been since 7 o'clock last night. They gave me a load yesterday for today that picks up tonight. And that's the only thing about coming to Florida is Florida and Texas both are what they call consumer states. So usually loads coming out of Florida don't pay that well. So you count on the load going to to pay better than the load coming out which it did so I'm not making that much to take this load out but it's going to get me closer to the house the only thing is like I said been here since 7 last night I went to bed at 12 midnight last night tried to stay up as long as I could went to sleep got up about 7 o'clock this morning and my load doesn't pick up till nine o'clock tonight so in a couple hours i'm about to try to force myself to, to sleep some more that way i can drive most of the night to get up close to montgomery and then after i deliver in montgomery tomorrow evening i'll go home so you know, your typical life of a trucker, you know. Right now, I'm sitting in the, um, 
sitting in a truck stop just kind of killing time it sucks because i don't have i don't have everything with me i when i left for orientation i packed clothes but there was no way to pack all my stuff my little freezer my little cooler there was no way to pack all of that so unfortunately all of that got left at the house so this weekend when i'm at home i'll probably get everything together i need to um you know have food in the truck even if it's just something like you know bread and stuff to make like ham and cheese sandwiches something simple that way you know i'm I don't have to stop at a truck stop because I would have stopped at a rest area last night had I had something to eat in the truck, but I had nothing to eat in the truck. Um, so, you know, that's just kind of that. That's the way of it. And I'll make some videos and, you know, I'm going to, I'm trying, I come up with ideas every day. It's just implementing ideas and trying to, um, remember them because i'm bad not to make notes about my ideas but i'm sure that beginner drivers or drivers that are thinking about getting into it may stumble across my videos and they you know i might try to give you give them some some ideas and don't get me wrong i'm not um i'm not you know a veteran driver by the standard that i consider a veteran driver i mean i've got about eight years but uh, to me, a real old school veteran would be some veteran driver would be someone who's been out here for 15, 20 years or more. But, you know, I think I've learned enough that I can help out with, you know, some ideas and finding stuff and all that. So, you know, I really want to try to help. That's the purpose of videos, to try to help people or sometimes just to talk and you know do stuff so but if all goes well hopefully tomorrow i will be at home by tomorrow evening right now i'm just just trying to deal with this because i hate and it's not the company's fault. I'm not saying that at all. It's just the trucking industry in general because this load was booked by a third party um, broker. And most all your major companies have their own brokerage firms now, like JB Hunt. JB Hunt brokers loads and sells them out to other carriers. They make money off that. Um, even the company I'm with, they have their own logistics division that they broker loads and they um, make money giving them and selling them to other carriers. So that's the thing, you know, you can do that. But unfortunately, you know, when they, when they book these loads, they book them kind of tight. And I say kind of tight because there's about two hours of extra time on the other end of this load. And to me, that's just too tight. I like a load that's got a little bit more lead way. But it is what it is. Right now, I'm just getting back used to the swing of things. Last night was my first night backing into a trucking spot, uh, a parking spot at a truck stop in over a year. So that was nervous and believe you me i know a lot of you guys that drive to see this are like oh don't have to get out and look i promise you i got my ass out and fucking looked last night i got my ass out walked the back of the truck made sure i wasn't gonna take the guy's mirror off and all that good shit um and I didn't care that I was holding someone up at all for once. I just didn't care because I know there was another driver trying to drive around. But at the same time, I've got to think about me, my safety, making sure I don't smack a damn truck and get rid of or something like that. I don't need that. And 
myself included in this, we as drivers need to not get irritated when guys are trying to back in because we go through the same thing. We try to back in and we get, and we feel hurried, we're liable to screw up. So I think we all need to be more patient with each other when it comes to, you know, backing into a truck stop. Yeah, sometimes you feel like you're stressed and behind the gun because, you know, you're trying to find a parking spot to park, you're running low on time. Well, we should not, we shouldn't do that to one another. We should try to give each other time to do what we need to do to get in the back, get backed into the parking spots. Cause no one wants to hit another truck and no one wants their shit hit. So that's all I've got to say about that <laughs> for right now. Cause you know, I do have some things I want to talk about, but this is kind of going to be a culmination video that's pieced together throughout this week. Um, just kind of my first week on the road, so. But with that said, I'm going to go. I'm going to try to um, lay down and try to force myself to sleep. I went inside and got me some food. I ate. Uh, my stomach's pretty full right now, so I'm going to see if that can't help me sleep. So that way I can get up tonight and run get on back up to Alabama y'all uh, y'all take it easy and I'll continue this video tomorrow hey everybody so here I am in uh, my final stop the big city of Montgomery Alabama delivering the coca-cola I'm in the dock so we'll see how long it's gonna take got checked in that didn't take long once i'm done here i'm heading home so this is the end of my week uh you know been a pretty decent week not bad you know not gonna complain because it's all in all been a pretty good week you have to excuse the hair i need a haircut so I'm just kind of waiting around here to, you know, see how long it's going to take them to get up, get me unloaded. It's about about 10 minutes to 5 p.m. So I'll unload here and I'll head home. Hopefully I'll be home by 8 o'clock if all goes well. And um, spent spent five hours getting unloaded yesterday and then spent two hours getting un getting loaded last night. Not yesterday, I got unloaded the day before yesterday. Anyway, it was Wednesday afternoon I got unloaded, yeah. Wednesday afternoon, got unloaded. You have to excuse me, my days run together. So I got unloaded, that took about five hours. Then I sat around all day yesterday till nine o'clock last night went and got loaded took them about two hours to load me i got there just before nine got loaded at 11 got my paperwork right around 11 got everything done hauled ass got up to ozark alabama didn't spend a night at the house because no lady was asleep i wasn't gonna wake her up at three o'clock in the morning spent the night at the truck stop got up she brought me some food when i got up and didn't have too much time to tarry. Hit the road, came up here to Montgomery. So I'll be home this afternoon, but it's been a pretty good week. Ain't too much to complain about. Actually, there ain't really anything to complain about. It's the normal stuff, you know. Hurry up and wait, get there, hurry up and wait, you know, be there on time, but then we're gonna take forever to unload you or load you or whatever. And that's, that's par for the course. If you've ever been in the military, you know that. I've never been in the military, but I know people that have. So they kind of go through the same shit, you know. You know, you do it by the book unless someone tells you to do it differently. But, uh, I'm gonna try to get the truck set up a little better this weekend before I head out, get my little refrigerator freezer in here so I can keep some cold lunch meats and stuff like that in the truck, uh, some cold drinks. Um, just stuff that I can, you know, cook proper. 
or you know heat proper you know i used to keep like a little 12 volts lunch box and i still got it i think if i can find it i'll use it although it's about on its last leg so i probably needed a new one um but basically it's a little stove looks like a lunch box plugs into a 12 volt outlet and it allows you to heat stuff up now it takes a few minutes but you get these little trays and they ain't much if you can find them in walmart and buy them in bulk um so you get those you put your whether it's ravioli spaghetti and meatballs or even soup you put it in there takes a minute now it's not like no microwave by no means but you know in 15 20 minutes you can have you some soup heated up or have you some, some spaghettios heated up spaghetti whatever you want to eat and it works it really does it does the job it works allows you to eat if you ain't got a lot of money to eat out or you don't want to spend the money to eat out and that way if you stop at a rest area you have food in the truck and i will show y'all what i'm talking about when i find it um because I do a few videos over the kind of stuff that I use and what I use and how I use it. Um, you know, so it's just, you know, stuff I think might be useful for beginners or people that, you know, been looking for stuff to do. But, you know, I'm going to get the truck kind of the way I like to have it, you know. The only thing about this truck is the cabinets aren't very wide, so you can't put... I can't put like my little refrigerator thing in there. I'll have to figure out another way to do it. And I will. If nothing else, you know, I'll put it right here next to the pass. I'll put it right there next to the passenger seat because it lays out flat. It don't stand up. And I'll put it right there. Um, but I'm just going to do the best I can to have it all set up the best way I can so that it's convenient for me and unfortunately that's the way of a trucker you don't have a lot of room for everything so you make do with what you have you really do um if i do decide to do the lease i'll have a little bit more room because i'll have a bigger truck um because in the um in the lease trucks one thing that's different is the back bunk separates and it's kind of like um if you've ever been inside a travel trailer or an RV, you know you'll have that little booth that's a table, but the table lowers and then the cushions spread out and it becomes a bed. Well, that's kind of the way the bottom bunk in the lease trailer, or not lease trailers, but the lease trucks are. In other words, the bottom bunk converts up into a booth and you have a workspace or a eating space or whatever, but then it has a, a top bunk that folds down with a ladder. So if I do do a lease, what I will do is I will sleep on the top bunk and keep the bottom in table form so I've got somewhere to eat, watch TV, relax, do work, do paperwork, etc., 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 and all that good jazz. Um, you know, and it's, so far as what I remember it being, it's gonna be the same thing as always been. It's gonna be a little stressful to hurry up and wait. The, hey, get there on time, don't be late, don't get there too early. Um, Cause there are some shippers that if you get there too early, they'll boot your ass out. I've seen some of them be so crazy. If you're there early, they'll be just be like, no, nah, I'll come back tomorrow. Then you're late. Or if you're, I've seen them where if you're late, they won't take you at all you know usually they give you uh, a 30 a lot of places give you an hour window some give you a 30 minute window in either direction in other words as long as you're not early by more than 30 minutes and you're not late by more than 30 minutes they'll take you some of them allow you to get there an hour early but you can't be late at all um, which is crazy because a lot of times you get there and you just you'll get there on time you'll get there like 30 minutes early and you may not get a dock door for three hours but that's the way they do it and it sucks usually in situations like that if you're lucky you get a little lumper a little lump not lumper y'all can tell i'm ready to be home not lumper but layup not layover detention pay there we are that's the one i'm looking for detention pay 
wishes just like you know you get paid for setting if they take x amount of time or more than x amount of time to get you unloaded and that all depends on the load and how it's brokered and all that stuff because uh, some brokers don't want to do the tension and that sucks but you know it is what it is so well I guess I'm going to sit here and wait and hopefully I'll um, uh, hopefully I'll get out of here soon and I'll get home and then I'll wrap up this week and get this video sorted and posted and all that so talk to y'all later